And so what's driving the echo chamberification of the conversation? Um, man, I don't have a satisfying answer for that yet. I know there's a lot of like discrete it things. It's a, it's a lot of things. I think that um, it's just a lot of things. Um, I should I should put together like a presentation list. There's so many different ideas in my mind. That I'm sorry, it's not satisfying to say that. There's a few things. You need so, to write a book. Yeah. So one has to do with a um, one has to do with kind of like a, a bubble effect when one is trapped in a bubble and bubbles can appear naturally, right? You have a certain amount of friends that all kind of believe similar things. You go on Facebook or Twitter, and because you follow them, you tend to see certain things. So you create kind of this like epistemic bubble where you just see certain types of news and that's it, you know? And people in that world are pretty easy to kind of break out of that world. Somebody might think, oh my God, like I think that, um, I think that uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, you know, was a murderer. He went, he shot 50 people and blah, 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 blah. And that's just because they've only seen one type of news. For that type of person, you can go to them and you say, hey, well, look at this. And then you show them something different. And they're like, mm, okay, maybe I'll change my mind. But there's like been a more intensification of that where people are, it's not just that they see one type of media. It's now that people are showing them one type of media. They're also actively discrediting other types of media as well. This more hardcore, this more pernicious effect is causing people to not trust any sort of external sources. So people are becoming in, in almost like a cult fashion, addicted to or reliant on one or two like epistemic sources for truth and everything else is just like total garbage so if for instance so if you believe in um i'll say like tim pool or alex jones or any of these other kind of like alt uh, alternative media outlets because you believe them and because you follow them almost by virtue of that you also necessarily distrust everything any government agency has to say so you get kind of captured into this weird world where it's like, okay, how do you feel about, say, vaccines? Well, here's what I heard from Joe Ro on a Joe Rogan show. Here's what I heard from Tim Pool. Here's what I heard from Alex. Yeah, this is this is actually a really good point, and it's so weird too because maybe I'm slightly more trusting of institutions. I, mean, I think that institutions make mistakes and can be biased and have people who end them sometimes who are bad actors. Sure. But I think that generally that the institutions get it right. Like if, if, so for instance, the other day I was, look, I was researching this issue with cetaceans and there's a, a whale, rhesus whale, I believe, uh, in Florida that, that uh, they estimate that there's only 50 of them around. And I'm like, I don't know, that's, that's, that's weird that they're, it's critically endangered. They think there's only 50 of them on the entire planet, which of course their, their range is in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, a certain portion of the Gulf of Mexico, even, I think. So I'm like, 50, how are they basing? Where are they getting this from? And I'm like, I'm so I go through down the rabbit hole to find out, like, who has made this determination that there's only roughly 50 of them left? And then I saw it was NOAA Fisheries. The <laughs> let, me, let me just show you what NOAA Fisheries is. Let's pull it up on stream. Oh, here, we'll do Wikipedia. The National Oceanographic uh, at, and Atmosphere. National Oceanic and Atmosphere Administration. And they have a fisheries service. The National Marine Fisheries Service. I saw that the source was them. And I'm like, okay, I believe it. Like, I think that the people who operate within these aspects of our government generally do like a decent job and are generally like pretty serious individuals who have like serious scientific credentials and reputations to maintain within their agency and that there's different there's different watch guards uh watchdogs keeping an eye on things both within the government and outside of it that like probably but NOAA fisheries is a reliable source and that was enough information for me to be like, okay, I, I believe it. Even though I was extremely skeptical. I'm like, how do you know for sure there's only 50 of them alive? How do we know that? And then I saw, okay, there's an entire government agency that's dedicated to exactly this. To studying fish and wildlife. Or, well, fish in this case. And I'm like, they probably know their stuff. But a lot of people are like, oh, the government is trying to cover up the fact that there's actually 30 million of these whales and they're launching it, they're creating an army to invade the land and like, ah, oh, blah, 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 or whatever, like some Alex Jones thing. <laughs> but it's like, no, it's like, it's probably true.
Jones. And then it's like, okay, well, what about this, this, or this? But all of the evidence you show comes from like academic journals or government institutions or medical agencies. Well, I don't trust those because I know that they're captured. Well, so yeah, not only that, also, I, I know the my publishing whole suite of other yeah. experts over here who I can, like, I yeah. have a whole bunch of other people with PhDs, right? I mean, you can always, there are enough PhDs in the world that you're going to be able to find something at least one or two. Your batshit crazy uh, opinion. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the credibility argument sort of, or the argument from authority goes out the window when there are a whole bunch of people pushing and amplifying the tiny minority of experts who disagree with the mainstream yeah. point of view. I mean, when, when I hear you say that, I can't help but think that we're, that this, this chamber or this, this, this like echo chamber is, is a function of algorithms, which, I mean, there's this cliche about social media that like you, it only shows you things that you already agree with, mm -hmm. which is nonsense, of course. <clears throat> I see lots of stuff on social media that I don't agree with. But the stuff that I see that I don't agree with is stuff that is maximally designed to reinforce the fact that it's stupid or that it, that it aggravates me, right? So you see charitable versions of things you agree with and uncharitable versions of things that you don't agree with. So it either, it either makes you feel better about prejudices. I was actually just talking about this the other day. Was it the last stream or the one before it where I actually made this exact same point? It's not that you aren't exposed to the other side. It's that when you are, you see like the worst possible version of the other side. You see the straw man argument or you see like the nut picking, the worst aspects Whereas you don't see the super nuanced and intelligent version of your opponent's argument. And I don't know if there's a way, I mean, presumably there is, right? Presumably there is a way that they can make the algorithm so it shows you more. It shows you more the, the nuanced, intelligent arguments. Now, I don't know how you do that if you, I don't think you can just base it on like word count. Like, oh, well, this article has... 50 paragraphs so probably it's more nuanced than this but like maybe maybe like certain like scientific studies get promoted over like clickbait headline news articles or i don't know like and do you even want the do you even want these platforms to i'm not the government of course um probably but these platforms to to do that to prioritize showing people studies and research instead of showing them you know clickbait news articles or clickbait YouTube videos or whatever it happens to be. I don't know, you know? And even then, like what studies does it promote? Um, but I think generally, like here's the thing that I think a lot of people don't really understand. And this is this is something actually Dusty pointed out. So uh, shout out to him. I guess I stole, stole this from him a little bit, but it's true. It's something I've noticed in my own life uh, relatively recently after getting into this space and looking up studies for things. For a lot of things, there aren't really that many studies. Like, if it's some super obscure human phenomenon in, in social sciences, let's say, they're like, there probably isn't a study on it. Or there's, like, one from, like, 1984. And you're like, how much stock do I put on this? Or you have, there's, like, or there's like one or two, and it's with the, like the, the puberty blockers thing. Um, and it's like, oh, do the, are these effective at, at reducing suicidality and uh, depression? It's like, well, there are two studies that have been done and they used they used uh, online surveys, at least in one of them. The other one I didn't fully read. Uh, I only read part of it. But one of them, it was, it was online surveys, and 62% of respondents were non-binary. And we targeted people using Facebook and, Facebook and Snapchat ads and Instagram ads. It's like, oh, this is, like, not great data at all. Like, I'm not sure I'd make any decisions or form any opinions based upon this. Like, this is awful. So a lot of things, there's not a lot of data, or there's not good data, if it's relatively obscure. Like, people assume that there's studies on everything, but it, it not not really as much. Like, it would be great if there were. Um, but a lot of things, there's just... It depends on what it is. Like, don't take that and be like, oh, well, we can't ever know anything because there's so little research in this. Like, no. Try to find what you can. And, and try to, and that should inform your opinion to some extent, right? Like, there's three studies on this, but all of them are over 20 years old. So you have like a confidence meter. Like, okay, so they're all saying X thing with, and they all seem like they were done pretty well. So I have a certain level of confidence that X, Y, or Z is true based upon that. That's how. I, at least I see things like I don't be like, oh, I 100 percent know this because I saw a headline on a news story that sort of semi confirmed my priors and I'm just going to run with it. Right. That's what a lot of people do. That's what I used to do fucking when I was like 15 years old. 
maybe even a little bit older than that. Uh, <laughs> but now, like, no, I'll actually, like, go in and I'll do the research. And, yeah, I'll have, like, a certain level of confidence that X, Y, or Z is true based upon what I find. And I'll weight different sources with different degrees of credibility. You already have, or assumptions that you already have, and better about hating the things that you hate, because you're only saying, when you're talking about, I don't know, <clears throat> transgender people, or let's not even pick on trans people, let's just say, like, uh, Drag Queen Story Hour, <clears throat> instead of seeing uh, people dressed up as clowns reading to children, you see the one viral example of the dude with gigantic fake, fake breasts twerking in front of five-year-olds, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the one that the algorithm chooses to propagate, because that's the one that people click. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, there also is sort of a phenomenon, too, where people need to condemn the worst worst things on their own side. Uh, and I, I'm not sure, I don't have any interest in, like, the fucking drag queen story hour shit. I think that that's, like, fucking stupid. Um, and I don't really see why it should be a thing for kids. Like, if you're an adult and you want to fucking, like, dress up in drag and do drag shows, like, whatever, I'm not sure why kids have to be involved. Uh, but when it comes to... Like, the, the algorithms, like, it's a very simple condemnation. Like, what I just said right now, anyone who's, like, conservative can look at that and be like, okay, well, he seems like he's pretty reasonable. He did condemn the thing. Or he's, or at least, I mean, I don't know, like, I mean, I condemn, like, the twerking in front of kids, too. But, like, yeah, like, I don't see why this this needs to be a thing at all with drag drag kids, drag queen story hour. Like, I don't, I don't see why it's a thing. I don't see why some people on the left are invested in it. I think it's really stupid. And I think that it... it detracts from like actual things in the world so i'm not a fan not a fan at all um but you need to condemn this stuff and people don't people will either defend it or they'll pretend it doesn't exist and a lot of times it's the latter it's the i'm gonna pretend that x y or z thing doesn't exist because it's inconvenient for me and that's just really fucking stupid and i don't i don't support that and i feel like it's a bad way to operate within the world I sure hope that Blue knows what he's doing. But yeah, it's not just the algorithm doing it. It's also that you're going to find people who are willing to defend it, which is weird, which is fucking weird. Like, why why are people on the right defending white nationalists and, you know, anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial and, like, crazy things? Like, why are people on the right willing to defend white nationalism? And including, like, wild statements Trump's made. Why are they willing to defend that? And why are people on the left willing to defend fucking like drag queen story hour for kids? Children's drag queen story hour.